Two days until Trump trial, I'm Michael Smirconish in Philadelphia with this question. Do you have a state of mind that would preclude you from rendering an impartial verdict based upon evidence adduced at the trial of former President Donald Trump? Because that's the question that will be front and center on Monday when jury selection begins and Trump becomes the first former president to ever face criminal prosecution. Said differently, said more simplistically, can Trump get a fair trial in Manhattan? That's today's poll question at Smirconish.com. Here's what he said yesterday. You know, jury selection is largely luck. It depends who you get. It's very unfair that I'm having a trial there. Judge Juan Mershon from the New York Supreme Court has the difficult task of seating a fair and impartial jury. Twelve jurors, six alternates in a Manhattan borough where Trump in 2020 received only 12.3 percent of the vote. In 2016, against Hillary Clinton, he got less than 10 percent. No wonder, then, that 500 or so prospective jurors will be summoned for consideration. Trump faces 34 counts of falsifying business records in connection with a hush money payment to a former adult film actress, Stormy Daniels. Jurors will have to determine whether the payment was a violation of state and federal election law, meaning that Trump paid the money for the purpose of silencing Daniels with an eye toward his reelection, or, as Trump will argue, was it made to spare his family from embarrassing disclosures irregardless of the election? Twelve jurors must make that decision by a unanimous verdict. So how exactly does a jury get selected? Well, in this case, after answering 42 questions designed by the judge to elicit bias. It's a process that happens in civil and criminal courtrooms all across the country every day. It's called voir dire, or to speak the truth. O.J. Simpson's death this week reminded everybody about his trial, which, of course, was televised. The Simpson jury selection process, the selection process, took two months. As Sarah Isker recently wrote in the dispatch, find 12 jurors, attorneys started with 250 people who were asked to fill out a 79-page, 294-question questionnaire. In Trump's case, despite the defendant, they won't be asked who they voted for previously or who they will vote for in the future, nor whether they think the 2020 election was stolen. They will be asked whether they belong to advocacy groups, what media they follow, whether they have any political, moral, intellectual, or religious beliefs that prevent them from following court instructions, if they participated in activism for or against Trump politically, whether they've ever belonged to QAnon or Antifa, and perhaps most importantly, whether they can set aside anything they've heard previously and decide the case solely based on evidence presented at trial. On Friday, Trump's lawyers argued the jury questionnaire lacks a question to, quote, identify potential jurors who align with rival political parties that are not necessarily anti-Trump, but could still support a disqualifying bias that is worthy of follow-up inquiry by defense. The lawyers are asking that if the judge doesn't amend the questions, they be allowed to ask questions to explore any affiliations. The jurors will be given anonymity in a move normally reserved for cases involving the mafia or drug cartels. And in a letter to lawyers last week, Judge Mershon made it clear that any jurors or prospective jurors who want out will have their wishes honored. Based on his prior experience presiding over the case of the people of the state of New York versus the Trump Organization, the judge said that questioning every person who self-identifies that they cannot be fair or impartial or is otherwise unable to serve would be unnecessary, time-consuming, and of no benefit. So, how hard is it to seat a jury in Manhattan that will sit in judgment of Donald Trump? That's today's poll question. Go to Smirconish.com and cast a ballot. Can Trump get a fair trial in Manhattan? My first guest knows something about this question. William J. Brennan is a veteran criminal defense attorney who, as co-counsel with Michael Vanderveen, represented the Trump Payroll Corporation in the 2022 criminal case in front of the same judge and in the same courtroom. Brennan conducted the voir dire in that case, and William J. Brennan joins me now. Bill, thank you for being here. What stands out from your jury selection process? Uh, good morning, Michael. Uh, the biggest difference will be that, in our case, same courtroom, same judge, same type of case, criminal, uh, we had an entity, a corporate entity. Our client was the Trump Payroll Corporation. In this case, 
the former president of the United States will be in the courtroom. Huge difference. Were there circumstances, I'm sure there were, maybe you can share one with us, where you thought someone should have been removed for cause and Judge Mershon thought otherwise? Uh, yes, there were quite a few, actually. Uh, one comes to mind. We had a questionnaire. I don't think it was quite as long as this one that I saw in the current case. But I think uh, questions 29 and 30 were something like, do you have uh, strong opinions about the former president? And uh, that was 29 and 30 was, if so, would they affect your ability to be fair? And we have one prospective juror, and you know, I've been picking juries uh, really since the late 80s, a long, long time. And you, know, you think you have some intuitive uh, skill set develop them, but I saw a, a female juror, probably in her 40s, uh, casually dressed. Uh, she had an Irish brogue. She worked at an Irish bar. Uh, normally my type of juror in a criminal case. And she had checked off 29 and 30. And it was late in the day, and I asked her, uh, I see you've checked these off. Would those strong feelings be positive or negative? And she said, I despise that man. And I guess I had just maybe was beat up from the long day. But I said, well, look, you don't have to sugarcoat it for, for me. Speak your mind. She said, I speak me mind. I hate him. And, you know, I've never experienced that. And I looked at Judge Merchan and, uh, you know, I, I just kind of assumed that he would meet my gaze and we would uh, dismiss her. But uh, Judge Merchan, who was a, uh, a very uh, smart and capable uh, judge and he ran a tight ship, he said, well, now, wait a minute. He said, if I told you uh, what the law was and instructed you on the law, could you put those feelings aside and, and, and deliver a fair verdict? And she said, yes, and it's been my experience, and I suspect it was your experience when you're actively practicing law, that when a prospective juror is in the courtroom and there's the pomp and circumstance and the judge is in his or her black robe, most people do say yes. Um, so uh, he kept her for the next round, which really meant he was going to keep her. And we came up with a different strategy. She had a, a parental health issue she was dealing with, and we got her out that way. But... Michael, the problem was not that prospective juror. It was like rows of shark teeth. Once she went, there were 50 more behind her. So, you know, we got rid of okay, her and well, didn't Bill, have to use Bill, a preemptive Let me ask strike, you this. But they're different. Are you, more, are, you, are you more concerned in voir dire when it's a Trump-affiliated corporation or as it'll be Monday with the man himself? Are you more concerned representing him about the, the woman with the Irish brogue who says, I hate him? or the sleeper who's not telling you anything and not showing you where <laughs> well, they're coming from. Well, you just from. hit the nail on the head. That's, you know, she was obvious. Uh, it, 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 she, she had her fin out of the water. You could see, you know, you could see where she was from the boat. It's the sharks that are under the water that are the problem. And when somebody checks no box and you just have a feeling, boy, I don't think this guy's going to be good for us. And you say, well, you know, sir, on paper, you appear to be the perfect juror, but you're sure there's not anything, maybe something even in your own mind that would cause you to give pause or hesitation and that you're now nah, good. Put me in, coach. You know, I'm fine. I'll, I'll be great. That's the juror that scares me because, as you said, it's a sleeper cell juror. And, you know, Michael, okay, it's what? important to remember uh, where we pick from up there. You pick from the island of Manhattan. So what of the mindset that it only takes one? You know, the rule of it only takes one, you're just looking for that one who could, who could make sure there's not a unanimous verdict. Does that apply when it's Donald Trump or a Trump-related affiliate? I think that applies in any criminal case. Look, we go into every case that we decide to try uh, with an eye towards winning, but a lot of times in criminal law, you play for the fumble. You need a unanimous jury of 12 in most jurisdictions to uh, get a conviction. And if you get one juror as a holdout, that hung jury can really be a game changer. Uh, and I think, I think it does apply, but I think it's tougher when uh, the defendant, uh, you know, is this particular defendant, and it's just the island of Manhattan that provides the potential jury pool. Okay, Bill, you're uniquely qualified to address this subject. Like, the whole world is wondering about the jury selection process in a Trump-related case. You did it in front of this judge and in the same courtroom. So what's your answer to my poll question today? Can Donald Trump get a fair trial in Manhattan? 
It'd be better off in Staten Island, Michael. Uh, it's 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 a tough it's a tough group to pick from. Uh, you know, it's often said that his name, you know, across the country, fifty percent feel one way and fifty another way. But it's been my experience, having picked, gone through hundreds of prospective jurors, uh, that on that island, uh, it's not a fifty fifty split. My my experience only. William J. Brennan, thank you for the insight. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Michael. Remember, I want to know what you think. How could it be anything else? This is today's poll question. Can Trump get a fair trial in Manhattan? What are your thoughts? Hit me up on social media. I'll read some throughout the course of the program. What do we have from the world of X? Setting it up, aren't you, Smirkanish? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying to pull a fast one on you. What was her name, Laura? I'm, I'm trying to pull a fast one on you, having, having invested the time to study the jury questionnaire, to track down and bring to you the lawyer who actually conducted voir dire. It's all just me pulling a fast one on you. No, I'm delving into the issue of whether people could put aside their biases for and against the man and render a fair verdict, because that's the question of the day, and it's going to be the question of the next several weeks as we watch this play out. So you're welcome, Laura. 